Hello and welcome. My name is John Kias. I'm the manager of ITOM product marketing responsible for MicroFocus's service assurance portfolio of products, which include network operations management, what we're going to talk about today, and also operations bridge and data center automation. So very, very happy to be with you today. Today, we're going to talk about top five reasons to get current. And I'll, first thing I want to make clear is that a lovely gentleman is not me as much as I wish I was. Um, however, I am here. We are going to talk about five reasons to get current. All right. Get to that next slide. Top five reasons to update network operations management. So there's a, there's the top five reasons. I want to point out here that it's a really essential that folks put in place the capability to update their software to get current and stay current because it's really important in terms of not only new capabilities that we're uh, developing and delivering to market based on both uh, industry trends and uh, customer recommendations. It's also about ongoing bug, bug fixes. You know, we have highly complex software and we fix a lot of bugs um, throughout the years and make the product that much better to use. And then also security enhancements. That's another overall uh, capability or another uh, layer of why we should be planning to update uh, our software. So as we say here at MicroFocus, get current, stay current, but let's talk about the uh, top five capabilities that you'll wanna consider uh, when updating to network operations management. Okay, number one, monitor for change. So what is monitoring for change? This is the idea that change creates problems in networks. And we know that, and the industry analysts know that. And what we're uh, working with customers is to say, you know what, you monitor for, for availability, you monitor for performance, you monitor for traffic. Why aren't you monitoring for change? Why aren't you getting ahead of where change is occurring in your network so you have a clear understanding of what happens when change occurs? And for a lot of folks, change is over on the automation side with the engineering, but uh, them implementing change and you mon and the network team monitoring for change is a different uh, concept. So what we recommend here is let's make sure that you're monitoring for change. And if you just have Network Node Manager right now, we've got some great opportunities for you to upgrade to uh, network operations management, such as with our um, Express version that includes this change monitoring. And this is something you'll hear a lot about from us over the next year, but it's something that's very important. And organizations that do monitor for change definitely have better outcomes. So. This is kind of adding that uh, capability in from network automation of, of monitoring for change, including that data right there in Network Node Manager. So you can see it right along with your performance graphs and make sure that uh, those changes that are occurring, whether they are approved or having someone uh, just make a change because they felt like the network needed it, that those changes aren't having unintended consequences to your network. So number one, monitoring for change. Number two, optic dashboards and reporting. This is a huge piece for us and we wanna get really into this to understand exactly what's going on here. So one of the things that um, we are doing as an organization is moving away from um, our traditional database, databases and moving towards what we call our optic data lake or the optic DL there. And the important concept here is that we're moving to a modern columnar based network or uh, <coughs> uh, columnar. <laughs> and the important piece here is that we're moving to a modern columnar database that uh, gives us the performance that we expect for modern applications, but also um, allows us to bring in so much more data. So not only um, can you collect um, network operations management data and metrics into uh, our optic data lake, you can use that same shared instance and load in all your system metrics 
especially if you're using uh, Operations Bridge. So uh, Operations Bridge collects all types of system uh, information from our own collectors as well as third parties, and we can bring all that data and metrics right into the Optic Data Lake. And what does that give you? That gives you time sequence and normalized data that you're going to be able to report out of and deliver beautiful dashboards, beautiful reporting to uh, the folks that are either, you know, want to know what the status is of the, the IT organization with dashboards, or you're doing some reporting and analysis to make sure that you're optimizing uh, your system infrastructure. So uh, Optic Data Lake uh, really is a step forward for us. And that's gonna be important here in a little bit because we're gonna um, talk about what that transition is. So um, we are replacing network performance server. So if you're using the uh, performance for metrics spy, it's traditionally used network performance server as the, the database and collection, and we're moving away from, from that. And uh, as of October 31st, it'll be our, in this year, it'll be our last uh, available downloads for NPS. So if you want to continue to run on NPS, you'll have to get that last download before uh, October 31st. But more importantly, it's essential that we look to updating to the Optic Data Lake. And one of the real key capabilities of the Optic Data Lake is that it's an open schema. Right, we publish that schema. You can get that data directly, and uh, you can use your own tools. What we call bring your own business intelligence. So if you have your own tools in house, we're definitely ready to let you report off that. And that's really a great thing, especially if you have a reporting team. They can go out and get that data uh, very easily with the tools that they know and love. Okay, uh, item number three: content in a integration with Ansible. We hear a lot about Ansible out there in the marketplace. It's really becoming one of the standards for automation across uh, domains. And we work really, really well with Ansible. In fact, we can take a kind of a, a simple automation tool, right? It's a scripting language and turn it into an intelligent updating tool because of the intelligence that we have built in. So uh, with Ansible, we've moved from a, a configuration management to event-driven, enterprise scalable, network configuration change and compliance monitoring with intelligent conditional remediation. Now that, that's a mouthful, but what that means is we're smart about the changes. Right, you don't have to build logic in like you would with Red Hat for a thousand different instances, whether or not uh, you know the the change actually goes through correctly, or if the device is in the correct state, or any uh, matter of, of variables. We have that built in with network automation. So uh, <clears throat> Ansible can be the kind of the controlling agent. We can go actually do those changes, which is really important because. If it doesn't work, we'll roll it back. It isn't just a, a network device going going dead. So that's what we um, think is is uh, really important with Ansible is that you understand how effective uh, Ansible and network automation or the automation capability with the network operations management uh, are together. All right, cloud deployment. So number four, this is uh, something that people have been asking for us, right? More and more uh, organizations are saying, hey, I'm done with on-premise hardware. I know uh, for you know my monitoring tools, I just want to put it out in the cloud and uh, not worry about it from there. And we're doing that. And listen, we got great deployment options. So you can deploy NOM in AWS and uh, Azure with no local instance of uh, network operations management. You can deploy NOM uh, on-prem only. So just like we do today, or you can uh, roll out a deployment of NOM in the cloud and connect them together with your on-premise. So you get a, a single view. So this is really a big step forward for us, something customers have been asking for, 
for. Um, we're really happy to be able to provide this to you. And it's also a great idea if, let's say, for example, you want to roll it out in a non-prod environment, and then eventually you, you'll you move it over to uh, production. Maybe that's on-premise, but uh, you want to test it out. You want to see what it's doing. Definitely put it out in the cloud, load it up there, um, have your, your, your cloud assets um, running. And then when you're not ready, you don't want to use it anymore, just discontinue it, right? So you're not paying for that. And uh, that means you don't have to have dedicated hardware in your non-prod lab. All right, number five, flexible licensing. Everybody's looking for a way to get the product a little cheaper, a little easier. Maybe um, you don't wanna go through the capital expenditure process, which can be a little frustrating working uh, with the, the accountants. And uh, with subscription pricing, we can definitely do that. So. Uh, you definitely get a lower entry price. Once again, <clears throat> don't have to go through the capital expenditure process. That can be so frustrating at uh, many companies. And um, if you want to uh, convert your existing uh, licensing, uh, we can do that for you. So uh, subscription's a new license option for you. It doesn't mean SaaS, it just means uh, subscription you're paying on um, you know, quarterly or, or yearly basis rather than uh, licensing the software for uh, for a perpetual. So that's a big step forward for us. Um, that's kind of the summary of it. <clears throat> Monitoring for change, essential uh, that we monitor what's going on in our network in terms of the diagnostics that are happening on our network devices. That can help us get ahead of, of downtime Optic dashboards and reporting, replacing NPS. Uh, that's something that's really important and it's our way forward for uh, FY22 and beyond. We wanna make sure that you are uh, moving in that direction. If you're uh, worried about uh, automation and how to make it work and you know, possibly your organization standardized on Ansible, uh, network automation and the automation capabilities within NOM have a strong capabilities for you because of the intelligence built in to those products that work really well with Ansible. Uh, new options for cloud deployment. Remember, it doesn't have to just be production. It could be non-prod. Uh, you have free non-prod licenses. You can roll it out there, test it out, and this will help you get current and stay current a little easier and then enhance licensing more to give you more flexibility. So that's it. I, I just want to remind you, uh, if you're looking for the MicroFocus, uh, um, how to upgrade the MicroFocus Practitioner Portal, just uh, type that in in any search bar and uh, we'll get you to there. And um, we're ready to help. If you uh, want technical advice, you um, want to understand the tools that are out there, if you wanna engage with uh, services and partner teams, um, you know, those inf that information's out there in the practitioner portal or easiest way is drop us a note, say get current at uh, microfocus.com and we can uh, direct you in the right direction. Okay, that's it for me. I wanted to say uh, thank you very much on behalf of all of us here at Microfocus and we hope that your experience with network operations management is um, as good as um, you're expecting. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Thank you.